Hi guys, welcome back to the vlog. I have not vlogged quite a while and I don't think this is gonna be a daily vlog. I think I actually want to film the next couple days because I have some fun stuff coming up in the next few days. But today, this morning, it is 9.51. We've already had a very productive morning. I got up, got ready, got the boys ready. Yay! Daddy is at work, honey. That's all day long. Isaac asked for dad. He doesn't like me. <laughs> It's sad. I just went and got my Walmart pickup order, so I'll give you guys a little grocery haul. And we have early intervention today. I think we have PT and OT today coming over. Isaac's being crazy. But yeah, we just went to, oh, and I also got McDonald's breakfast because I've been eating so healthy. I'm 24 weeks pregnant yesterday, turned 24 weeks, which is awesome, good milestone. But I've been like having avocado toast and a protein shake every morning for breakfast. And this morning I woke up and I'm like, I want McDonald's breakfast so bad so i went and got mcdonald's breakfast and savored every bite i ate it while i waited for my walmart pickup and it was fantastic okay my dishwasher's on and it's so loud i apologize but quick grocery haul the boys are just sitting at their table playing and watching cars and apparently Isaac's upset now, so that's nice. Okay, from Walmart I got some shredded hash browns, cuties, my boys love these, they eat them every single day, some cereal, some sandwiches for the boys, apples, I got two different types of apples. I've been craving just like fresh fruits. So I got some red apples and some, I think these are Honeycrisp and Granny Smith. These are avocados. I wish they wouldn't put everything in plastic. Kind of annoying. And some cucumbers. Got some cream cheese, bananas, minced garlic. I use this all the time in my cooking and I just ran out. Coconut cream for my Diet Cokes and Coke drinks. You're probably like, what the freak? It's, it's basically like an Italian cream soda. It's very delicious and I do like to put a splash of this in my carbonated beverages and it's delicious. Got some whole milk for the boys, tater tots, and these little popcorn chickens, they love these for lunch. It's good lunch for them, some oatmeal for them. And I do actually really like the coconut LaCroix and I will put like a flavored syrup in this to make it taste a little bit better. And it's quite delicious. So got some of those, some peanut butter, and then two loaves of bread, some bagels and some tortillas. I just have to share, I always was like, I never like talked crap on the Stanley Cup, but I didn't get it. I'm like, what is with the hype? It's just like an insulated tumbler. I don't understand. They're always sold out. Every influence always have one, has one. I don't get it. And then my husband got me one as an early Mother's Day present and I'm like, okay, I get it. They're literally the best. I think it's the handle and the fact it can fit in a cup holder just like makes it top notch. And it actually does hold my ice better than any of my other insulated tumblers that I owned it before so I don't know if it's just like those things that make it awesome but they're $40 which is pretty pricey for a tumbler like this and they're always out of stock so you have to like wait for restocks to happen but I got the one that's like a light blue and pink and it has the pink on the lid so cute but I got a diet coke from McDonald's and I'm gonna make my delicious coke creation so I'm gonna put a little bit more ice in my cup like I said, I'm gonna put this coconut creamer in it and it is so good. You obviously know what this is if you're like a Utah person, but if you're not from Utah, like a, it's basically an Italian cream soda, like that's what it is, except in Italian cream sodas, they use soda water in half and half, but it's basically the same, same idea. Put this Coke in here. literally the perfect amount and then some oh this smells so good just a little splash of that and it is bomb such a yummy this is not an everyday thing this is a treat but it is a delicious treat and I've already drank my protein shake for the day so this is like my special treat mmm so stinking good okay I just put the boys down for a nap about 
10 minutes ago and I'm gonna do a quick unboxing. This is a Love Every haul. I love them. I've talked about them a lot on my TikTok, my Instagram, and my YouTube. I've got one of the play kits to unbox and I also have one of their block sets. So I actually already own one of their block sets and my boys play with those blocks all the time like pretty much every single day so i decided to get a second one just so they can have more blocks can build more stuff and have a little bit more variety of what they can make with it so i'm gonna unbox that first there's like literally like 200 pieces so i'm not gonna open it up completely but i will throw a picture on the screen of everything that's inside of it so you guys can see i just don't want to get it all out right now this is what the box set looks like you can make so many different things with this you can make it the box into like a car you can build a bunch of stuff there's a bunch of different shapes um <laughs> i like on the box how the art kind of shows the different block shapes and what you can play with them and do with them so yeah i did decide to get a second one just so my boys had a little bit more variety and could make and build more stuff but i'm not gonna get it open right now i'm actually gonna go put it with their other block set so i don't lose anything and it's all together but I will completely unbox the kit that I got. So this is the one that is for 11 to 12 months. For some reason, when I was getting their kits like in order as they were getting older, I skipped this one. I don't know why. And I was on looking on there on their website and I was like, I don't have that one for some reason. And this one's the thinker. It's 11 to 12 months. And the reason, even though my boys are two and a half, I went back and decided to get this one is because they still play with their like six month one, their eight month one. Like they still love those toys. And and I was looking at the toys that came in this one and I was like, they would still really like those and play with them. So I did decide to get this one and then it'll be perfect for baby boy. So they always have a cute little picture in here and on the back it shows everything that's in this particular kit, what it's called. So the first thing I see right away is so sweet and it's this little doll, which is exciting because my boys are gonna have a little baby soon and it'll be fun <laughs> to see if they enjoy playing with this. They actually don't really have any dolls. They have stuffed animals, but they don't really own any dolls. So this will be cute for them to see. I'm kind of curious like how they will respond to that. See if they'll wanna play with it. They're really into cars right now. That's their thing. Oh, well, this is sweet. This is so cute. It says notes to my child, letters for a future you. What the heck? I did not know this came in here. This must just be, yeah, this isn't supposed to be in here. I think they just are putting this in because it says that it's their love every anniversary. That is so cute. It comes with all these envelopes of different colors. And I think you're supposed to write little letters to your kids and then like put when on here, like open at this age, open at this age. That is so cute. Cute. Okay, that's not part of the kit, but it was in there. So I feel like I had to show it by the way All the play kits come with these play guides So it shows all the different ways you can use the toys what skills it's supposed to develop Like it says on here ways to play expert tips development info at home activities And it gives you just a little bit more of a creative look at all the different toys and like when to introduce it what it does I have kept every single one of these and I have them in a special place in one of my drawers So when I go back to play with the toys, I can see exactly Exactly what like it's meant to develop and it also has a bunch of stuff in here that's like doesn't have anything to do with the toys but it's just a good developmental activity for that age so for example this is the so this is like the one-year-old one it has like these play ideas like putting tape on the wall and having the baby pull it off and practice standing just like has a bunch of stuff in here so these are fun to keep don't throw these away it has a bunch of creative ideas in it okay so the first thing in here is this cute little book my boys love taking these little book type these little types of books in the car because they're like so perfect and this one is an animal book that is so darling we're like teaching them animals right now so they will love this okay these are called opposite balls so this one's really heavy and this one's really light i think this is meant to teach them like weight this one says have your child hold the balls talk about how their two balls look the same but how they are different roll them back and forth to see how they move differently watch the balls sink and float in the bathtub these are designed to play on the floor or in the bath and teach things that although things look alike they can behave differently so that's really cool and then next we have this sensory pouch so this is probably for just putting things in here out open in that's something we're working a lot with speech therapy so i know our speech therapists will like this and playing with this and our ot so this one also says it's supposed to help enforce pincer grasp pulling things in and out of here. And then next we have this wooden box that is like a sliding top box where you can like put things in the different, there's like a wood blocker right here. So there's different compartments 
to put the ball in and you can practice pushing the ball in and then have sliding this over so this is open. Cute little things like this actually keep my boys occupied for a long time. They'll put like cars and other things in their little like wooden box toys from Love Every. And then next we have the, <laughs> this one is called the pincer puzzle. So I'm guessing this is supposed to help their pincer grasp. So this is like a little one piece puzzle, but it has a very small tip to get it in and out. So they basically have to use a pincer grasp to get it in and out. So our OT will really like this one. The last thing in here is this adorable puzzle. So you have all these little pegs you put in it and then you can slide this to drop them down, which I think is so cool. So this is just teaching cause and effect, fine motor, very creative and fun. And these are such great quality, by the way. And I just love, love every. While the boys finish their nap, I'm just going to finish editing another YouTube video. It's about the baby's nursery. I almost just said his name and the progress we've made on it, what our plans are, what theme we're doing. And I've kind of shown you what I've done in the nursery so far. So I need to finish editing that video, hopefully get it done while they're napping. And then once they're up from their nap, I got to feed them pretty quickly and then we'll have early intervention. Sorry guys, I'm on my phone now, but I am on my way to World Market. Seth actually just got home from work. It's 3.45. He usually gets home about four o'clock and he is watching the boys and I am gonna go to World Market. I can't remember if I said this or not, but I want to get some flavored syrups for my coconut drinks that I really like. Hello, gate. Sorry, I live in a gated community and the gate was just like closing while my car was pulling up. Anyways, but I think I want to go to Thirst first. I actually don't want to get a drink though. I do just want to get their pretzel bites. That just sounds so delicious. And I've actually never been there and there's one kind of close to my house. Good morning, you guys. It's the next day and I'm back on my phone again. I apologize. But today I'm on my way to my 24 week checkup at my OBGYN and I'm actually really excited because last time was my anatomy scan, but an ultrasound tech did it and I actually didn't get to talk to my doctor because he was in a C-section. So I get to talk to him today kind of about my anatomy scan and everything. Um, he already texted me and said everything looked perfect, but he wanted um, to just go over some stuff today. So that's exciting. And I actually have, it's funny, I have a hospital like five minutes from my house, but I'm actually choosing to go to a hospital that's further away. This one's about 15 minutes away because I just like my doctor way better there. I have a question for you guys in the comments. If you're a, a lady and you go to the lady doctor, do you prefer seeing a guy or a girl? I feel like this is very controversial and some people are really opinionated about it. And I've seen things on like TikTok and stuff of people like males should not be allowed to be OBGYNs or males should not be allowed to be obstetricians or whatever. I've seen people say that all the time, but I don't really get that. I've gone to both and I much, much, much prefer going to going to the guy. I mean, the guy I see now is the only guy that I have seen, but he is way better. I've had a few experiences with a female male OB. Well, I guess I've seen a good amount of both during my twin pregnancy, but the doctor I see normally and the doctor that I see this pregnancy is a guy. And I, before I ever was pregnant, I saw a woman doctor and I just had a lot of bad experiences with her. And now I'm like forever converted. I'm like, I'm only going to a guy. I'm only going to a guy because I feel like my guy doctor like doesn't try to pretend to like relate and like, I don't know, not relate what I'm going through, but like he doesn't try to pretend he doesn't try and like say, oh, I've been there, done that, or, you know, relate to what I'm going through because he's a guy. Like, he just takes everything very seriously, and he's just very well educated. And, like, I mean, he's a little bit older. He's been a doctor for a long time, so I feel like he's seen a lot. And I also trust him a lot because with a mono dye twin pregnancy, which is what I had with the boys and all the complications I had with them, he stayed so on top of it and advocated for me so much that entire pregnancy. And so many doctors and people I know with mono dye twins do not have doctors that are proactive about it and like aren't very vigilant but he was just so on top of my care and like referring me to all these specialists and he was seeing me and he was the one who advocated for me when I was feeling like I started to have preeclampsia and I was like I think I have preeclampsia I don't know what's going on I don't feel well and he totally advocated for me and stuck up for me even though my specialists were like oh your blood pressure's fine it's fine it wasn't fine and he knew it wasn't fine because he knew me personally and he could tell that I did not, um, I wasn't normal. And he was the one who pretty much ended up saving my boys' lives. So I definitely am a little bit biased in that way, but I know some people have had like really bad experiences with male obese. So I'm curious your opinion. Tell me below, 
Do you prefer, do you like a male or a female OB or do you not care? Okay, I'm back for my appointment now. I'm gonna be talking kind of softly because the boys are asleep in their rooms down the hall, but I'm about to do a full face of like glam, glam makeup because tonight I'm going to a party slash event with the brand Freshly Picked. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, but they are a baby company and I got invited to go to like a, I don't know if it's like an influencer event, but it's like a mom's night out style event. They gave me a plus one, so I'm bringing my sister and I just want to look like really glam and pretty because I do pretty much like regular everyday quick makeup a few times a week but I rarely get like fully glam and I'm going to talk to you guys about how my appointment went while I do my makeup I need to go get my beauty sponge wet so I will be right back so I got back from my OB appointment a couple hours ago and it went good everything looks great with baby boy um I'm really happy I'm actually starting to gain some weight I was pretty sick the beginning of this pregnancy I actually lost quite a bit of weight my first trimester but I have now officially gained eight pounds I think which is good I'm 24 weeks pregnant and he's looking good. He's actually breech right now, but he said that's pretty normal. And as long as he is head down by like the time I have to deliver, that's like the important thing, right? I talked to him a lot about my birth plan today. If you guys didn't know, I had an emergency C-section with my twins at 32 weeks. It will be almost like three years ago when I have this baby. It was fall of 2019. And I had that because of a few reasons, but the main one being I had severe preeclampsia, which can be very dangerous. You can die from that. But there was also some other complications. Both my twins were growth restricted. Isaac's brain was not developing properly, and he had some interventricular hemorrhaging happening, and I was going to deliver liver at 34 weeks anyways, but I just ended up going earlier because of the preeclampsia and stuff. I'm going to be attempting a VBAC if possible with this baby, so we just kind of talked about that and like what my options are and what our game plan is. He does not work at a very big hospital, and so he kind of errs on the side of caution. He's always been very, I'm talking about my doctor by the way, he's always been very supportive of me wanting to have a VBAC, and like that has been my game plan since day one, and he's like been pretty supportive about it, but there are some stipulations and risks that come with that if you've had a prior c-section. Um, a lot of doctors won't even do them at all because of those risks, and the main risk is uterine abruption, which is basically your uterus exploding due to the pressure of contractions and because you have um, scar tissue there after a c-section. So with him, his kind of rules, um, I don't like calling him that, but like he, whenever he does feedbacks, he does not induce ever. Just because your risk of uterine abruption, he says, goes up significantly when you get Pitocin with a VBAC. So he said, if you go into labor on your own, your risk of uterine abruption is about 1%, so it's very small. But if you use Pitocin, it goes up to 7 to 8%, which is enough of a risk that he doesn't do it. So basically, as long as my body goes into labor on its own, and I actually don't even have to fully labor on my own, I'm planning on getting an epidural, and he says if I'm full term and I'm like dilated to a 3 or a 4, they will just kind of treat me as like a normal birth. Like if I need a little bit of Pitocin just to help progress, then that's fine. But he basically just doesn't want me going in for an induction and labor for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours like 18 hours because that's when it can get really dangerous with a VBAC. So I'm just praying that my body will go into labor on my own because I really really want to have a vaginal birth. It's just something not necessarily just because I want to experience it because I mean I do but I just the recovery aspect like I got an easy recovery with my twins because they were in the NICU. I didn't have to take care of them. Like I just got to take care of myself so it wasn't that hard of a recovery but this time Time, um, I'm gonna have to take care of two and a half year old almost three-year-old twins and a newborn I just need to be very cautious if I do have a c-section um, We just kind of like went over like if I do need a c-section like what I can do after and like what my limits are Just because I do have the boys and the boys do pretty much are carried everywhere with their disability So we talked about like how much weight I can carry and when all that But he's like I wouldn't just worry. I wouldn't worry about it right now Like we'll cross that bridge when we get there But something kind of interesting he told me is that when he does v-backs it's kind of of like a stereotype for doctors like OBGYNs just to like show up at the last minute and help deliver the baby and then they just peace out <laughs> and leave because I guess most of the time if you don't have any complications it's probably like 
the case. <laughs> but he says when he does feedbacks, he is with the mom pretty much the entire labor. Like he is, he's in the hospital, like right outside the room and like right there um, while she's laboring. Because if you do have placental abrupt, or not placental abruption, uterine abruption, y you could die. It's very, very, very dangerous. And you will need that baby out within minutes. So he says he stays in the hospital whole labor, like with basically with the mom. That is kind of reassuring though. Like if anything were to go wrong, like he is right there ready to <laughs> save our lives. Um, I'm not really opposed to interventions. Like I wouldn't just pick to have an induction just to have one. Like I'm not, I, that's just not something I just would like to do. But he did say that if I don't go into labor on my own and like, I'm like overdue that they'll strip my membranes and like do things to help me, but I just can't get a full on induction. So I know I have options which is reassuring. Otherwise, the appointment went good. I have to do my glucose test next appointment for the diabetes, which everyone always is like, oh, that drink is so nasty. I don't think it's that gross. I think people kind of exaggerate about it, but that's just my opinion. Like, even my last pregnancy when I was had HG and I was throwing up every day until the day I delivered, it didn't taste that bad to me. <laughs> so I know this time it probably will be pretty easy okay i just finished my makeup i do need to touch my hair up because i curled it yesterday and there's a few pieces that are a little wonky but i think my makeup turned out pretty nice i did just kind of like a uh, very basic glittery lid and brown crease which is kind of my go-to makeup look and now i'm gonna feed them lunch and then when Seth gets home from work this afternoon, I don't know if I need to run any errands before I get ready for this party, but party's not till seven. So I'll be able to help with dinner and then get dressed. And then my sister's coming over and we're heading out to it. And I'm really excited. Okay, I'm fully ready for the event. It is a couple hours later. I'm about to leave in like 20 minutes. I wanna show you guys my outfit. So this is what I'm wearing. It's like this cute floral green slip dress. I just kind of threw this jean jacket on to make it a little more casual. And I have these wedge sandals. I'm not sure where the shoes are from. The dress is from Sheen and this is from Target. And my earrings are from Target as well. And I feel like it all looks pretty springy and cute. 24 weeks, I'm bumping. It's starting to really grow. Hey guys, it's the next morning. Sorry if that was like a jump scare. I look crazy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, last night was so much fun, but at the same time, I have a lot of thoughts about it because it was like, I don't know, I feel like I'm gonna have to get vulnerable for a second here. It was like an influencer party and it was hosted by a baby brand and there was a few other like co-sponsors and I'm pretty sure the whole event was just to advertise some new products that they had and like get moms together and like have a fun night and it was really fun. It was mostly like a dance, a big dance party and they had like food and drinks and like little swag bags and it was fun. The event was fun. The company that put it on did a great job. I have nothing but good things to say about that but I had like a major sense of imposter syndrome <laughs> while I was there because there were a lot of famous like mom influencers that literally have like millions of followers on whatever platform, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. It just kind of felt like I was pretending to like be someone that I wasn't. Like I, it just didn't feel like I belonged there. <laughs> And not in the way that anyone else made me feel that way, but just that like I was in the same room party, like I was invited to the same thing they were, like it just felt weird. It did, it was very out of body, like is this my life now? And I don't really have a ton of followers here on YouTube. Um, it's actually my smallest platform. Um, and Instagram's still pretty small too. I, I have under 10K on Instagram. I have like 8,000 something, 8,600 or something. But TikTok is my big platform. And I have about four, I think 430,000 followers on TikTok, which is a lot. So I'm not saying that I didn't deserve to go. I mean, I have somewhat of a quote influence. But it just seemed very, I don't really know how to describe it, but it just kind of felt like out of body. Like I, imposter syndrome is the only way I can, like the phrase that I want to use for it because I just never thought like I would be that person and like be able to go to stuff like that. And like, I always just like saw those people online. Like I never put myself in that spot and was like, oh, I think of myself as one of them, if that makes sense. It just felt very odd. And it kind of did make me like reevaluate how how I want to present myself online because there was a lot of people there who seemed very different than how they present themselves online and like 
it was funny. It was kind of like half and half out of the people that I recognized. Like some people that I've like been following and I've known, like they were, it was so fun to like meet them and chat with them and hang out. And like, they were so sweet and nice. And it was so, so, so fun. I made a lot of really good connections last night, but then I feel like there was also a handful of people where like some, some of them follow me or I follow them or whatever. But then seeing them there, it was like, it was like a different person. It was so weird. I don't really know like how to put it in words, but it made me really think about how authentic I want to be on my platforms and how personable I want to be on my platforms and just try to make sure that who I am online is who I am in real life. Like I'm not playing a role and that I'm not pretending to be anything that I'm not. Like I had that realization kind of when I was driving home last night. And what made me think of that was, so I brought my sister with me. They um, invited me and said I could, you know, bring a friend. And so I brought my big sister with me and she is not a social media person at all. Like she has Instagram for her business, but she doesn't really use it personally. And like, she just not, isn't into that world. She doesn't really know who like influencers are. She doesn't follow influencers. Like her circle is very small. And when we got in the car, she just looked at me and she was like, and she had a fun time. Like we had a blast together. But we get in the car and she's like, that was weird. And I'm like, oh, well, I kind of know what you mean, but like, why do you say that? And she was like, I don't know. Everyone there just seemed so like, so pretty and just so fashionable. And I just saw so many, so much clothing that I've just never seen before. And just, it was like, I felt like I was, 25 years older than everyone in the room and keep in mind i'm 24 and my sister's 30 okay there are plenty of people there her age but she, because she's just not in that world she's like i just i was like shell-shocked like how beautiful these women all were and like it, she's like it just caught me off guard i just didn't like realize like this is this whole like world exists like it just it totally caught me off guard and so we kind of talked about it on the way home and like how certain people present themselves online versus how they are in real life and their kind of level of authenticity. And I understand that some people are really personable online and then they're a lot more shy in person. That's totally normal. I, I get that. Um, I feel like I'm probably, I think that I'm just as chatty in real life than I am like online. I, if, you know, like if, if there's a mom or someone that I know, like knows who I am and I know who they are and we've like had a mutual connection, I will like last night at the party, I went up and talked to like, I don't know, seven or eight people that I had never met before, but I knew I knew who they were and they kind of knew who I was. And it was totally fine. Like I had no problem going up to them and chatting to them and, and like establishing that connection. But some people don't feel that way. Some people are really shy and they don't, and they're self-conscious or nervous or whatever. And I totally get that. Um, but the thing that kind of is funny to me are the people who just are like so crazy and like outgoing and like just put themselves out there so much online and then in person just seem very 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 much the opposite that was like a whole unnecessary tangent but i just have been kind of like reflecting on it all morning and just like what i want my content to reflect and like how i want to present myself online it just did did make me do a lot of thinking because holy crap it was like oh, it's probably like 50 influencers ish well probably more than that probably like 60 to 100 influencers all just like packed into this like small room and like just all interacting and it just it was pretty weird not gonna lie it was just like an interesting it was such a blast but it was a very interesting dynamic anyways i am gonna end the vlog here it's getting kind of long anyways i love you guys so much if you like my content please follow me over on instagram and tiktok i post there pretty much every single day if you want to keep up with me and i will see you guys in the next one bye